This is Mr. Holsey with H Squared's Officially Understood Science. Today we're looking at Newton's Law of Force and Acceleration. So this is often referred to as Newton's Second Law. And it has to do with just the movement of objects and how fast they're going to go and why they go at a certain rate because of force. So the law of force and acceleration says the acceleration of the object is directly proportional to the net force acting on the object in the direction of the net force and is inversely proportional to the mass of the object. And I'm sure that's your reaction right now. Like, what did he just say? So let's simplify everything. Let's break this down. Let's make this work. So if we broke this down, all that is saying is that net force is equal to mass times acceleration. You've probably seen this commonly referred to as F equals MA. There's a little bit more to it uh, than, than just this, but this is the main part. Uh, the main formula you're going to get from it is that net force is equal to the mass of an object times acceleration. So if you're still not 100% sure what I'm saying, let's try something a little bit different. Now, believe it or not, that F net equals MA actually means a lot more than just a formula. So let's break down that big explanation from the beginning. So the acceleration of an object is directly proportional to the force. So in other words, if I double the force, it causes double the acceleration. So let's do a very simple kind of example. Let's say I have a ball that weighs one kilogram. I'm going to push this ball with a force of 10 newtons. And the ball, since this is a 10 newtons is an unbalanced force, that ball is going to go off in this direction. But the question is, what is the acceleration? So my acceleration here would actually still be 10 meters per second squared because we're, we'll figure out how to rearrange it here in a little bit, but my acceleration is 10 meters per second squared. Now, let's say I take the same, oops, different color. Uh -huh. One kilogram ball. This time, I push it with double the force at 20 newtons. The acceleration is going to be much greater. All right, and so in this case, my acceleration will be 20 meters per second squared. And that's just because it's a one kilogram ball. Obviously, there's a whole formula with it. Your acceleration isn't going to equal your newtons every time. This is just an example. But essentially what this is saying is that as I increase my force, as I increase my force, my acceleration is also going to increase as long as my mass remains constant. So once again, if I don't change the mass of the object, the object doesn't, if I don't get anything any heavier and I push it harder, it accelerates faster. Okay, has more acceleration. So let's break down another part of that uh, long explanation at the beginning. Acceleration is inversely proportional to the mass. So in other words, if I double the mass, it causes half the acceleration. So we're going to take that 10 kilogram ball, or that one kilogram ball again. OK, 
Okay. And we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to push this ball with 10 newtons of force. And my acceleration is 10 meters per second squared. Now this time, I'm going to change the mass to 2 kilograms. I get a different ball. I'm going to push it with the same amount of force of 10 newtons. And what we'll see is that my acceleration will decrease to 5 meters per second squared. Okay? So that's because as my mass goes up, my acceleration will go down if I'm using a constant force. Of course, the opposite is true. It's inverse. Okay? They invert. Inverse. Invert. And so if the same thing, if it was the opposite, as my mass, if I had something of lower mass, if I lower the mass, my acceleration would go up if my net force remained constant. And so we can see that right here in this video. We're going to, it's going to use the same amount of force for each of the carts. We launched the empty cart. We mark where it stops. Now we're going to add a weight to it, a mass. So we increase the mass. Let's assume that this is the weight of this is the same as the car. So now essentially we have two cars worth, worth of mass. Same amount of force. And we're going to do the same thing here. And we look at them all. We can see very, very clearly that as the since the force was the same for each cart, as the mass in the cart increased, the acceleration will get lower. It will decrease. And so you can see that inverse relationship in that diagram right there. So the formula for force, we're going to use the triangle again. So the formula for force, we are going to be looking for force, so we cover up the F. That's going to give us F net is equal to mass times acceleration. So let's practice this, and we're going to be using rules. Uh, so a bowler rolls a 5 kilogram bowling ball down a magical frictionless bowling alley. The ball accelerates at an average rate of 2 meters per second square. How much force did the bowler apply to the ball? So we've read it, now it's time to underline important things. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and box in the main question here. How much force did the bowler apply? To the ball. Now I'm going to uh, underline some key points here. So we are looking for how much force. And I'm also going to underline the question ball because I want to find information in the main part of the, the information part of the question that relates to the force on that ball. So a bowler rolls a five kilogram bowling ball, all right, because, you know, it could have been the bowler was five kilograms. So we need to make sure we look for, for ball. 
uh, down in Magical Frictionless Bowling Alley. That's actually kind of important here uh, because now we don't have to account for friction, which is why that formula is F net, net force, because there's always more than one force acting on an object. So here we only have whatever this bowler is throwing it. And the ball accelerates, so accelerates at two meters per second squared. All right, so now I'm gonna label a couple of things. So that five kilogram thing right there, that is our mass. Here is two meters per second squared. So that's our acceleration. Uh, I know mass is in kilograms, acceleration, meters per second squared. How much force, my formula for force, F net is equal to mass times acceleration. So I've labeled this. Now, one more thing before we move on, I do wanna point out that a Newton, what, we're, what force is measured in, is equal to a kilogram times meter per second squared. So what that means is if for some reason we come across, across a problem where we have five kilograms, is not five kilograms, but it's rather five grams, you're gonna need to convert that five, kilo, that five grams into kilograms. So you're gonna have to convert. So it's kilograms times meters per second squared. All right, well, I think we've underlined all the information. Uh, we've labeled some stuff. Let's add a couple more things really quick to the labels. I'm going to do this out to the side. Force, net, mass, acceleration. This is always a good practice, especially when you are converting things. If you convert something to see where you came from as far as your numbers. So my F net is something I'm completely confused about. I don't know what it is. And that's what we're going to be solving for. Our mass was five kilograms. Our acceleration, two meters per second squared. And always make sure you put your units. So we're just going to plug this in. F net is equal to five kilograms times two meters per second squared. So five times two be 10 kilograms times, oops. Oh, come on, there we go. meters per second squared. Then I'm gonna go back over and just convert this. So F net is equal to 10 Newtons. So let's try another one. Sven the fisherman throws a 15 kilogram fish into the ocean. It accelerates at a rate of three meters per second squared. How much force does the fisherman apply to the fish? So I want to know how much force did the fisherman apply to the fish? And here's my main question. I'm going to go ahead and start underlining so I know I'm going to be looking for force, but I also going to underline, I'm also going to underline fish because I want to know about the fish, not the fisherman. I could easily say that Sven, the 95 kilogram fisherman, throws a 15 kilogram fish. If you're not reading and underlining, uh, you're gonna easily just be like, oh, 95, that's, that's my mass. You're not gonna read it. So you need to be looking for, for that kind of stuff. So I think we got everything in the main question. So Sven, the fisherman, throws a 15 kilogram fish. Okay, into the ocean, accelerates at three meters per second squared. Okay, 
So I'm going to go ahead and start labeling a few things. So we have force right there. So that's F net is equal to mass times acceleration. Draw a little fish there. Fifteen kilograms, that is our mass, which should be measured in kilograms. That's a check mark right there because I don't have to convert. And then I have my acceleration right here. And that is in meters per second squared, so we're good there. All right, so force net mass, acceleration. So my, no, I'm going to be looking for force because it says how much force. So I know I'm going to be looking for that. So I'm just going to put a question mark there. Uh, our mass is 15 kilograms and our acceleration is three meters per second squared. So let's throw that in here. So we have F net it's equal to 15 times 3 meters per second squared. So that'd be 45 kilograms times meters per second squared, or simpler terms, 45 newtons. And so for every, so you, Every one of these problems, it, you're gonna your units are kilograms times meters per second squared, but you convert them to newtons. So if we wanted to find mass, if a question asks us to find mass, uh, remember how to use the triangle. You simply cover up mass, and it'll give you your formula: force divided by force net divided by acceleration. I wanted to find for acceleration, which we're going to use in a little bit. I simply cover that up and I have my formula force net divided by mass. So let's practice another one. The 50 Newton applied force drags an 8.16 kilogram log to the right across a horizontal surface. What is the acceleration of the log if the force of friction is 40 newtons? So this one, we have to deal with friction. And this is why the formula asks for F net, net force. So first thing we need to do, we need to underline, find out what we are finding. So we are finding what is the acceleration of the log. Okay, what is the acceleration of the log? So let's start underlining a 50 Newton applied force. Okay, you want to have that applied part. That's kind of important. Drags a 1.8.16 kilogram log to the right. So we know our applied force is going to the right across a horizontal surface. So we know it's, it's horizontal. If the force of friction is 40 newtons. Now friction is an example of an opposing force, which means it's going to go in the opposite direction. So this right here, is 40 is friction okay so the first thing we need to do first thing we need to do is figure out what the net force is so we're going to do this over here in the corner so we have 40 newtons here 50 newtons here these are going in opposite directions, so it means they're going to be canceling out some of that force. And our net force is 10 newtons 
to the right because we'll just subtract them. So our, that's our net force right there. So we're going to go ahead and set up our formula because we know we're looking for acceleration. Now we're not going to be using delta V over delta T for the acceleration here. We're going to use the net force or the for, net force formula. Force mass acceleration. And I'm just going to cover up acceleration. So it's going to be acceleration is equal to force net over mass. So we're just going to plug this in. Acceleration is equal to 10 newtons divided by mass of 8.16 kilograms. Probably be helpful if I did this because now I'm having to read back in the formula instead of doing what I needed to do in the first place, which was write all this out. It makes a really good quick reference guide. Because instead of having to read back through all this formula, I can just look right next to my, my problem. Okay. Now, one thing I'm going to do really quick, I'm going to change this acceleration right here uh, to 10 kilograms times meters per second squared. If you know your unit for acceleration, you don't necessarily have to do this, but I want to make sure I, I get all this. And the reason I'm doing that is because this kilogram, this kilogram are going to cancel each other out, leaving us with the meters per second squared, which is the unit for acceleration. And so I'm going to go ahead and divide these. Um, so when I divide that out, it's going to give me 1.2. 1.225 meters per second squared. We're going to round that to 1.23 just for this example. And that's going to be our answer right there. So acceleration is 1.23 meters per second squared. So for every second, it will increase 1.23. Now, there is a relationship between gravity and weight that's going to apply here. So weight is a force, like the push of your hand is a force, and it's measured in newtons. So when you go to the doctor and they measure your, your mass, your weight, okay, well, they're not measuring your mass, they're measuring your weight, and they tell you 120 pounds, whatever. And what they're actually telling you is the force of gravity, the, your weight on Earth, uh, is the gravitational force between you and the Earth because the force, is, force of gravity causes all objects near Earth's surface to fall with an acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared. And so with this information, since weight is a force, gravity is acceleration, we could easily find out what your mass is. So here we have the formula for weight. Weight is equal to mass times little g, but look at that, 9.8 meters per second squared, little g is acceleration in the skies. So basically it's the same thing as the formula for force. It's the same thing as the formula for force. So let's let's play around with this for a minute. All right, so now let's figure out how we can calculate our weight on other planets. So I'm going to do a couple of these with you uh, with an example. Uh, and then I want you to do it on your own. This is actually really fun uh, to do. So we're going to start off with your weight in pounds. 
Uh, I'm just going to make up a weight um, for, for the simplicity of this. We're going to say the weight of our person. I'm going to go ahead and change that over here. Weight is 120 pounds. Now, the problem here is that with weight, and we say 120 pounds, and uh, weight's in force, weight's a force, so we're actually going to have to convert that to kilograms. But that's actually not that hard. Um, there's a couple of ways of doing it. We're going to use, uh, you can multiply it by 0 0.45 to get kind of a rough estimate, but we're going to do it the correct way. Uh, so one kilogram is equal to 2.5. 2046 pounds. So we're going to take 120 here and divide it by 2.2046 pounds. Or, uh, yeah. And that's going to give us a weight. If I can get my pen to work. There we go. Of 54.4, and it has a long string, kilograms. Okay, so our weight is 54.4 kilograms. So once again, you take the 120 and divide it by 2.2046, and that gave us 54.4 kilograms. You could also, if you wanted to do another version, divided by 2.2 it's it's fine but we're trying to be as accurate as possible so now so we know our weight we know the gravity of earth we know the gravity of earth is 9.8 meters per second squared so if we want to know mass the mass of you well, there we go. We have weight divided by gravity. So 54.4 kilograms divided by 9.8 meters per second squared. And that's going to give us a mass that is 5.5. You know, we're going to round this up. We're going to round this up. So I'm going to change that to 5.6 kilograms. So if you weigh 120 pounds even, you have 5.6 kilograms of mass. If all the atoms, all the everything weighs a total, it has a mass of 5.6 kilograms. It's that interaction between you and the earth that is what your weight is. And so that 120 pounds. So I'm gonna write this again up here. Our mass is equal to 5.6 kilograms. That way we just have it as a reference point right there. All right. So now we're going to do our formula. So we want to find out your weight on these some of these different objects. So our formula, weight is equal to mass times acceleration. Now, all of these right here, are the accelerations of gravity for these objects. So I'm going to do a couple of them for you and we will, I'll let you do the rest by yourself for fun. So since you have this, so we have 5.6 kilograms. So let's do mercury. We'll do mercury first. So we're going to plug this into our formula. Weight is equal to 5.6 kilograms times 3.7 meters per second squared. And so my weight 
would be 20.72 newtons. And we're going to we're going to convert this back just just for fun. We're going to convert this back into pounds. And so originally we divided that that number by 2.2. So this time we'll multiply that by 2.2046. And so on mercury this person's weight will be 45 0.6 pounds. 45.6 pounds. All right, let's do another. Let's do Jupiter. Yeah, let's do Jupiter. So we had the same mass because mass doesn't change. So you have 5.6 kilograms. Our acceleration of gravity is 24.92 meters per second squared. And so we'll just multiply 5.6 times 24.92. And that is going to give us a force of 139.6 newtons. And we're just going to go ahead and have a little fun, see what that would be in pounds times 2.2046. And so on Jupiter, if you weighed 120 pounds on Earth, you would weigh 307.7 .7 pounds on Jupiter. Now let's do the biggest object in the solar system. Let's do the sun. Why? Because I want to. All right. So same mass, our mass doesn't change, but this time our gravity is changing. So 274 meters per second squared. So 5.6 times 274. That would give us 1,534.4 newtons. Already, that's pretty impressive. We're going to go ahead and multiply that by 2.2046. And so, on the surface of the sun, if you could possibly stay there, you would weigh... At 120 pounds, 3,382.7 pounds. So I'll leave the rest to you. I'll leave the rest to you. Which I just think this is really neat because figuring figuring this out, knowing that mass is constant in your body, um, it will near constant depending on you know what you eat. But it, it's not going to, your mass doesn't change. And so you can actually calculate uh, gravity or the, the, your weight, the force of what you would be. So I want you to try this one yourself. I want you to try to calculate the acceleration of gravity on NERDO. Uh, leave your answer in the comments section below and we'll see if you're right. Uh, the, And this has been Mr. Holsey for 8 Squared Sufficiently Understood Science. Uh, join us next time when we talk about Newton's third law of motion. And remember to like, share, and subscribe. And we will see you next time.